thanks for being here, guys. Um, obviously, reflecting back on last Thursday's game, don't want to talk too much about it, but a great environment and uh, a great night for Memphis football. Ability to get a win, uh, tough fault one like we know, but yeah, it's a very good Navy team. I think anybody watched the service cameras this weekend know that uh, they're tough to play, especially on a short week, but uh, credit to them and credit to our team. Uh, obviously, it will come out and now focus 100% on Mizzou. I'm very excited about the opportunity to go play in St. Louis uh, at the Dome. It will be an exciting environment, obviously. Uh, we know they're going to have a lot of fans, but I have high expectations that our fans will show up as well. You watch them on film. There's a reason they're an undefeated uh, SEC football program. 3-0. Uh, they've only had one turnover. They're playing at a high level. They just beat a 15th ranked team. Um, and they, they do a lot of good things. they got a quarterback that's playing at an extremely high level, especially his pass game. They could keep the 61 yarder and make it. And they're playing, uh, as we well know, they play very good on defense. So we're going to have our hands full, but uh, quite excited about the matchup and the challenge. And excited to get down to St. Louis and see what we're capable of. I was able to watch really the fourth quarter. Um, so I tried to watch as much as I could, you know, still continue to go through some stuff. I was able to watch the fourth quarter of it. And um, that's one of those things a lot of coaches go back and watch TV copies anyway, so you get a feel for the ebbs and flows of the game, right? Sometimes when you're just watching cups, you may only see formations. Um, yeah, that, that's, it's amazing because like every coach, you feel for other coaches, you, you get butterflies in your stomach and your nerves and all that stuff. And uh, But to watch it live was it was quite interesting. But uh, like the outcome, I mean, kudos to them and congratulations to Missouri for a great win. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's not like Missouri's, a, you know, I mean, their, their offense is humming and they're doing some good things. So, but yes, look, uh, I said it with a sigh of relief after playing Navy. Like, I hope we're not playing another triple option team. Um, and I, like I told you guys post game, they did a phenomenal job. I mean, credit. And I, I reached out to Coach Newberry uh, the next morning with the different things that they showed offensively. Um, it wasn't just true triple option. You guys noticed, I mean, they lined up and gun and shifted and had some wide receivers cracked. And, you know, he told me, he goes, well, we spent that whole, and I kind of mentioned that, you know, they're, when they came back from Dublin, they spent that whole bye week just putting in nuances and different things for our game. And, and credit to them. They did a nice job. And, um, you know, we found a way at the end. But, yes, uh, Frank, it's a – okay, now on to maybe uh, – I don't know if there's such a word as traditional offense, but something that I think we all will say, okay, that looks somewhat familiar to something we've probably repped on and more closer to what they see on the day-to-day in practice as well. I know you, you had that short thing in the guys today, but – well, I, you know, hopefully it's like riding a bike to get back on it pretty quick. But uh, I think the biggest thing for our guys is, um, okay, that putting that game behind, you know, it, and good or bad, right? Putting that Navy game behind everything that we just taught you um, was the old men in black movies. Okay, let's let's lose side of that now. Right. Hopefully we learned to tackle from that game. I mean, those, you know, that was the biggest thing that came from it, man. We poor tackling. And that's something that has to improve. It doesn't matter who we're playing, right? Navy, Missouri, whoever uh, down the road. So, um, but <clears throat> you learn from that. And then, yes, let, let's change it because there's going to be different defense calls. You guys saw us align in different defense alignments um, and preparation for that game. Yeah. So we'll go back out. I think our guys have a great understanding. We did give them some downtime, try to get their bodies back. Um, we kind of did a modified deal yesterday, but uh, tomorrow. Hopefully there's uh, plenty of recall for what our base defense looks like. Uh, I mean, big physical team. I mean, they're, you know, uh, unfortunately and fortunately, I was part of that game, I think, six years ago where they, <laughs> my tail's still red from I mean, the butt kicking they gave us. I mean, they went down there and at the time we had pretty good running backs. We had one of the better lines in the country. And I mean, I, I, we got our tails kicked, and I take full blame. I mean, it was bad. Um, and that's what you look and you say, oh, my God. Okay, that guy, oh, wait, he's 300 pounds. Oh, wait, that guy, oh, he's 295 pounds. You know, and just, um, they've got, they're big, they're physical. Um, and, you know, you watch what they did to Kansas State, and they were effective in a lot of different ways. I and mean, Kansas State was the 15th ranked team in the country for a reason. And we know those, those Mizzou teams, I and mean, we recruit a lot of those guys, uh, lost some recruiting battles to them, and, and they, they play like a top 25 team in the country. And so there's a lot of things. I mean, it's going to be a battle, um, which I'm excited about. I think our guys are up for that challenge. But you watch them, and there's not a whole lot of holes to pick. You sit there and say, well, what about this game? Like, it's college football. I mean, I, I, that's why I always laugh when people are like, 
Oh, the, sh should have they beat MTSU by more? I, I don't know. Should we beat Navy by more? I don't know. Should Florida State beat Boston College by more? I don't know. Like, that's part of it, man. They're they're a really talented team. Uh, they're well coached, and it's it's going to be a heck of a challenge, but we're excited. Well, I don't I don't have to tell you about the coaching having a win streak. Uh, you normally have your own team, and normally on Saturday games, you would leave Friday to go to your destination. You're leaving Thursday. Things are changed around. Can you explain why that's going on and, and trying to get acclimated to what Joe and Michael Mack decision? Yeah, it's a combination. It's a great question. So, you know, with what we had with us playing a Thursday night versus Navy, I said, okay, the coaches will have the ability maybe, and I didn't have our coaches. I, I, you know, they were on the road recruiting Friday. Really, most of them got back Saturday midday and put together bed the Navy game. But I said, hey, let's come in a little bit earlier on Sunday, put away Navy and maybe focus a little bit more on Missouri. So maybe we got a few hours head start on Missouri. And so my thought was, okay, we're doing this. We, we knew it was no longer going to be a home game for us and, and now an, an away game in St. Louis. Um, how do we go take advantage of this new environment and then maybe a few extra hours? And our players are resilient more so than coaches, right? You say coaches get on the routines, and that's what we're used to. Um, so for us, we just said, okay, it, it is going to be different. We hadn't played a lot of our guys have never played at a dome. Um, and so this opportunity to go get down there and do a, a practice there uh, is going to be huge. You know, we know what we do here with our, our walkthrough on Thursdays during the indoor, um, gather our troops and, and, and get going. We'll still do academics and study hall. Um, that afternoon and evening, uh, but it's just another chance for us to continue to bond and build together. It just worked out playing on Thursday. I think we'll maybe, maybe get, get a few hours and be able to get done what we need to down there in St. Louis. Okay. A guy like Kirsten Bell, the question is just talking about that. Is going to be one of the associate head coaches kind of like yeah. you guys are different with this person? You know, it's, uh, we thought about that even when we brought him in, like, hey, oh, he'll have some intel in Missouri. But so much of it is, you know, it's good to know some stuff on it. But reality of it, there, there's so many changes year in and year out. I mean, we've got if, if every team took guys from the portal, I mean, we've got what 50 guys out there somewhere that have something on us that are calling. It's no different. It's always left in the NFL, right? With 32 teams, there's constant roster turnover. And so, if a guy was cut off a practice squad, or sometimes you'd take a guy off an active roster that got put on a practice. And you'd sign them to your active roster, all your practice squad, just to get into on that previous team. And then half the time you'd show up and it's like, wait, this is all because, you know, um, Toski's a, a extremely smart individual. Uh, the biggest thing is for him just to focus on himself and then we'll try to put together a great game plan. But, uh, you know, he, he's got some he's got some understanding of personnel, but everything changes so much. Right. They their play caller, um, you know, is one that, they, you know, you know, drink which is so heavily involved. Um, kind of a new play caller, if you will, on offense. So just seeing some different things. And again, every year, like if someone were to take one of our players and, and go over there and say, okay, tell us about it, you know, maybe you, you start thinking too much. Well, I saw this on film, what? And then it can tell us more challenges. But uh, he'll be a resource for us, but uh, I can't put a headset on him and have him out there for us. Um, yeah, so whether it is or not, I mean, it's. Um, playing in St. Louis, it's, we lost a home game. Um, they're paying us money to go play there. And so we're excited about the opportunity to go there. I'm sure they'll have a lot of fans, but I know a lot of Memphis fans will show up. Uh, we will practice some crowd noise because I'm sure it'll be loud. But uh, I also know a lot of our fans are excited to head over to St. Louis and cheer us on as well. So it will be a unique environment. Um, you know, we got to be prepared for it. But, you know, the biggest thing for us, and this is not coach talk, is focusing on ourselves because if I pump up the environment, I'm going to show them a picture of what the, the dome looks like. The last time I was in there was, uh, don't quote me on this, 2011. Gus Farratt may have been the quarterback for the Rams at the time, you know. Um, so something of that nature, but excited to get back there. Um, you know, I root for the Cardinals, kind of being the local team. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know what the environment will look like. I know it's going to be unique, and it'll be a fun one. In terms of the opportunity to accept some of playing in SEC teams, I think the first thing that everyone knows about the this season yeah, I think any chance you get to continue to put the program on a national spotlight, right? Whether it's a Thursday night ESPN game, you know, just like all of us, we get more messages after those where every coach in the country watches, you know, college coach watches the, the Thursday night game. So it's funny because most guys, you never get a text from a, a coach at a program when they're playing at the same time as you are on a Saturday unless something interesting happens. So. Um, this is just another chance for us to be in the spotlight, right? A, a, another national television game, um, the opportunity to play an opponent that um, is in a great conference, right? Let's, let's make no bones about it. The SEC is probably the strongest conference in college football. 
Um, they got a history. Um, and, and guess what? They're highly ranked and they just came off a huge win. So I think these are opportunities for us to go out there and put our best foot forward. And hopefully the end result is what we want, but uh, exciting. And I think those are the type of games you want to play. You know, as, a, as a head coach here, um, as many challenges we can have and as many teams that we're playing that are close to being ranked, that, that's a better opportunity for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, and in previous games, it may have been a turnover here or there. And then, what, so going back to it, and I kind of alluded to this during the Arkansas State game, um, was, you know, as 11 guys have to do the same thing. No different when playing that option, right? If one guy of the 11 didn't do what he's supposed to, we saw what could happen. Um, differently, no differently than offense, right? It may have been a drop pass, right, that gets us back. A wide receiver not running north and south almost gave me a darn heart attack, right, when they catch the ball, you run that way, right? Um, a missed block by an offensive lineman, a missed assignment by somebody. So you, you combine all those things, and that's what's hard to get consistency. Um, you know, you want to have as many explosive plays as you can, but we, we, we've been known to be able to sustain some drives, and I think that's what's, you know, kind of shooting ourselves in the foot with some of stuff. We're not an overly penalized team. You know, we we got we always want to clean that up and uh, knock on wood, but uh, just being able to do that at a high, and that, again, Sounds funny, but but we got to practice and, and be more consistent. Right? And I think when it shows up day in and day out, then that's when we say, okay, we got a product that can go out there and do it. Before. It looks like Fraser was a little bit better. That came from the first. I don't know if you know. Somebody's going to be one hundred percent. I mean, he's a <laughs> he battles. It certainly didn't seem to be affecting him on that last two minute drive. I mean, he is hobbled a little bit, but uh, he's a heck of a football player. And, and, you know, they do a lot of quarterback run game stuff, and I, I expect we'll see a lot of that uh, similarities. Plus, they also have faith in a lot of their other quarterbacks. So. Um, you know, hopefully he misses the bus or the flight to St. Louis. I mean, he is a phenomenal football player. We obviously know he's one of the top player recruits in the history of the program and uh, what he's capable of. He's electric. Um, so we're going to have to do that. I alluded to earlier, we have to be able to tackle. Um, we understand that plays are going to occur. That's college football, right? Guys are going to make plays. Guys are going to make catches. Um, but we can't allow the, the five-yard hitch to turn into a 50-yard game. So we got to wrap up. You know, we got to swarm to the football uh, and continue to play an aggressive style. Going back to Boston, you got a few plays for the How do you like the way he's kind of the He's been great. He's a fun – first off, Toski Dove is, uh, is – a phenomenal young man. I mean, I cannot say enough wonderful things about him. There's a reason, you know, he was a captain at Missouri. Okay. And I think, you know, we've got a lot of great leaders on our team. And I think, you know, he was banged up, um, you know, had an off season surgery. So he missed spring football for us. So I think had he been one of those that had been able to play spring ball, we would have even seen more production from him because we talked about that getting in rhythm, right? And a quarterback getting in rhythm with his wide receivers and getting on the same page. And here's a young man that unfortunately wasn't able to do spring ball, but um, I think at the same time he's he, he's the teammates love him. We're glad he's here. He, he's been phenomenal, um, and that type of young man with the type of production he's going to have in the short term, it's been huge. We're, we're going to continue to have high expectations for him, and I know he's excited about this game. I don't sit here and think he's going to tell you it, it, it means any more than the other, but in reality, I'm sure it's going to feel a little bit different. Um, obviously, uh, excited for him in this opportunity as well. I'll let you know Saturday at probably uh, 10 o'clock. Um, I, look, it's, I, I say this all the time, Matt, and that, that's kind of what I alluded to earlier, right? Like, man, first off, credit to Navy, credit to the service academies. I got a lot of text messages after the UTSA game for Sarmi saying <laughs> they're hard, they're hard, even harder on a short week. And, uh, and they are, and that's the reality of it. It's, um, but we got to play better football in general. I don't care who, whoever our opponent is. If we were playing in FCS school, our, our preparation has to be better. Our game plan has to be better. Our tackling and the ability to own the football, that all has to be better in order to go out. Or We, we have no chance the rest of our game. So um, the process has to improve week by week. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, will, it will take wins however they come. And uh, it, uh, like I've told you guys, I think it was uh, last year, so it wasn't that ugly when I said, Sure, but I'll take I'll take I'll take fourteen ugly wins a season, and, and we can shake hands and say, "Man, you went ugly." It's, I've been called ugly too myself, so it's right. however it unfolds. But uh, 
the process has always gotten it. And I, and I pushed our guys on, on Sunday. You know, I met with them Friday morning before hitting the road recruiting. And then again, yesterday, and said, we have to be better. And there's so many things. And again, it doesn't matter who the opponent is. We have to improve upon it. I think our guys have the right mindset and approach to do so. Well, I'm talking about tackling. Yeah. I was just going to yeah. say, I'm tackling. You didn't get to do that against Navy because the short week. How much did you do this week? Yeah, I mean, you still are smart and aware of guys, you know, even though it's only the fourth game of the season, you don't want to go out there and just tackle, 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 because then all of a sudden now the guys, you got to be healthy for a game. Right? Keeping our guys, uh, our players healthy is generally the number one priority in what we do, in reality, okay? Because if you're not healthy, you give yourself no chance, plus the welfare of the student athletes. Uh, now, a lot of teams tackle Tuesday, Wednesday in practice, and that's just not what we do. Um, so a lot of our offensive guys don't get tackled until Saturdays or Thursdays, whatever it may be. Um, we will work on a little bit of tackling tomorrow, and then that's it. I mean, our guys have done a nice job. We're obviously, we work on it with bags and all that stuff, but when we're going against a scout team, um, we do. We do a little bit of live tackling, and then after that, it's you know on bags and all those things, doing tackling circles like everybody does. We work on it as much as any team in the country. A short week we didn't, and uh, in my notes I put, if we ever play maybe on a short week again, you just go full pad and you say find a way um, because it's you know you watch some of those plays and it obviously showed up. What did you do today? Just the tackle. The first half, obviously a lot of tackles high. They were going like really little arm tackles. Second half, you tackled much, much better, and you have the first two games. Was it just one of those things that maybe hit you with something a little bit different for the defense? Or? So we talked about it post game on the radio with you guys. Was you know one we tackled we were tackling too high, right? And sometimes we were there and just not wrapping up completely, right? And, and clasping and finishing the tackle. And so I think part of it we were in the right spot and just finding a way. Then all of a sudden, I think we're playing one of those triple option teams. There's some hesitancy because you're told all day, okay. What my eyes, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes. When you're playing a normal team, just go trigger, trust it, right? And so, you know, maybe we're a little bit slow to get there, not in the perfect position instead of being a full body tackle, maybe you're just with our hand. Um, also, different angles, right? We haven't faced a lot of teams. You know, there's some teams that run the toss, but I mean, now all of a sudden you're trying to tackle a pitch, which is a little bit unique, or you find yourself in this spot, putting your foot in the ground and going playing. Um, so, I think a combination of all those things, but no excuses. We just got to be better and finding ways and it's good to talk about it, but you do need to practice it as well. How does it help? I think it's pretty good. I mean, I think, um, you know, I don't expect us to be missing anybody going into this game um, that we didn't have going into last game. Yeah, I do, Mark. I, I really do. It's, you know, that's a great question because I, I, I mentioned this, guys, before the first game. Like, you want to see improvement every week. And that's that's what every football coach wants to see. Okay. You know, the question was asked after week one to week two, how much is the improvement? And I, I think we're seeing some good things. And you always want it to be a reflection on the scoreboard. But uh, I think this team has grown in the right direction. I think we're seeing those things. And, you know, just, and I'm always weary of it. I talk to the players like, hey, how, how are you guys doing? What do we think we're doing? How, what, how's the, the mindset and the approach, how are you guys? Because I can sit here and, and tell you guys, hey, it seems great, but uh, what, what's their, their attitude in the locker room like? And uh, I've been pleased with it, but I do think we are getting better. Certainly, like every week, there's going to be things to clean up in, in week 12. Um, but, yeah, I like the direction we're headed.